If you search for recent headlines about consent, you'll find that all the coverage is about duping and stealthing and children. And these headlines show that we as a society are stuck on the most basic definition of consent, which makes sense given that so few of us were taught about consent as part of our sex education. But we could be talking about consent as the first step to much better sex. I think that a lot of BDSM practitioners practice negotiating consent in a way that the general population doesn't have a chance to engage in. In a lot of heteronormative, vanilla sex, um, things are just taken as a given rather than figuring out where your desire fits into what you've seen on TV. So how can we get to the next level of negotiating consent so that we can explore putting those moments that turned us on into practice? First, go see if your state requires covering consent in sex education, because it probably doesn't, and petition your legislators to get on that so the next generation doesn't have to do this. But back to your sex life. Hate to start with the boring stuff, but you have to master the basics and start relationships based on a model of communication and consent. Start when you're dating. You know, it's important that we disclose to our partners exactly what our activities and risk profile looks like, and then partners can decide, is that an acceptable level of risk for them? And you know, that doesn't mean that you have to tell the people that you're with exactly who you're hooking up with, but I think it's painting a picture of what your risk level is and letting them determine their own path forward. And communicating these things is not necessarily easy, by the way. I don't know if this is everyone's experience, but I had to learn how to say no. And not just in the bedroom, just in my life, period. So voicing my needs was essential to my relationship with myself and to the people around me. Communication is a practice. It takes dedication and commitment to doing. The more you do it, the easier it gets. But as you start to practice voicing your needs, one eternity later, you can start exploring within your heteronormative vanilla relationship. Consent, we love it. And also makes checking in while you're having sex much less stressful and honestly hotter. Communication fosters an environment for consent, which fosters an environment for safety. And there's nothing sexier to me than feeling safe in my sexuality, you know, and with a partner. I think that that is of the utmost importance. How can there be pleasure without safety and trust and that communication there? And once you've developed these tools, you can start to use them to explore your desires that really require safety and trust. Like I'm team throat f***ing all day. And the thing that I realized that that actually is the emotional need coming up is that if you are going to have someone that is constricting your airways, which is similar for choking or anything like that, it's an immense amount of trust. And so then when you break it down that way, it's like not thinking about, oh, here's the thing that maybe looks aggressive on screen, but it's the trust and the emotional security that I'm trying to get to. What is really interesting to me about BDSM is sort of the ritualized forms of negotiation, that figuring out what kind of play you're interested in doing, how you're interested in interacting with someone. And I also think it's really important to talk about what happens when something goes wrong. And I say this for anyone in any sort of relationship, whether it's kinky or not, but that all intimacy is inherently risky and that something is bound to go wrong. Do you trust the person that you're playing with to be able to sort of bring it back to a space of, good a space of goodness or to end it, if that's the way that it's going? Consent and communication can get you the emotional and physical safety for orgasmic, shameless sex in whatever turns you on. In relationships, it's easy for people to make assumptions. And this is why communication is so important because otherwise we're just assuming and then we're projecting. And then what's really going on gets confused and lost in the mix. I think that having this open communication and having consent, it shows that you are compassionate and that you care. Consent carries a lot of weight, and it should. But the more you practice it in small everyday ways, the more you can demystify it, all while having the best sex of your life. How do communication improve your sex life? Tell us in the comments below.